Okay, uh, let me just say to start with that this language family, the Austronesian language family, is the largest on Earth in terms of its geographical extent, at least prior to the European colonial expansions of the past four or five hundred years, which spread English and Spanish and French to various uh, parts of the world. What you find in Taiwan is an area of great linguistic diversity with a relatively small number of languages. And that, linguists for more than a hundred years now have known that that's the clearest indication of the starting place. And you know, botanists have used exactly the same principle to determine the origin of cultivated plants like rice or wheat or barley. Uh, it's the area of greatest diversity, in, the, in that case, the greatest uh, genetic diversity for plants that shows you where they probably started. So it's the same principle with languages, where there's the greatest genetic diversity, that is the greatest diversity in terms of how closely related the languages are. And that's the area where they probably started. As I, I say this in my foreword, this is a very important topic that most people know nothing about. Even people who speak these related languages, who speak Austronesian languages, they have little idea about the history of their language family. Uh, this to me, the what's called the Austronesian expansion out of Taiwan to halfway around, more than halfway around the world, 206 degrees of longitude from Madagascar to Easter Island or Rapa Nui. Uh, this is one of the great chapters in human history because if you think about it, people did this with no modern technology. They crossed thousands of miles of open sea with simple, technology that they developed thousands of years ago. Uh, and I say simple technology, but it's simple, but it's very sophisticated in many ways. This is an amazing feat, a human, human accomplishment. Uh, I'm sorry, I get emotional <laughs> about this. This is something that all human beings should be proud of. People had learned to follow, follow the stars at night, and during the day they follow the currents, uh, when they got within a few hundred miles of land, they could follow the flights of birds. Uh, they learned how to use their minds without books to accomplish something that's quite amazing, really. So why is this book important? Because it represents a story that most people in my country, the United States, know very little about, even here in Hawaii a story that most speakers of Austronesian languages, wherever they may be, and there are many different countries which have speakers of Austronesian languages, some of them national languages, most people know very little about their history. Uh, this is a history that they should be proud of. It's a history that um, should be in the history books. When we study world history, this is one very major event that should be in those books. And this book that's now being published in Taiwan is helping to make that more visible to more people. That's why I think it's important.